Let's play together. So prior to we proceeding across with uh, MM training, we'll just get into a little, I mean, you know, have a kind of a quick introduction about each and, I mean, both of us. And uh, let me understand also about what exactly you are looking into so that uh, the expectation is also set right. In the likewise, I want to set some expectation as well from you. Okay. Uh, so I am from basically a mechanical engineer, uh, and uh, I did my uh, uh, diploma in logistics and supply chain management. It is an executive diploma, and uh, I have into various industries. I have total 3.5 years of experience. Uh, in that, I have been into supply chain industries, sports industry, and right now I am working in the manufacturing industry. Okay. Predominantly in uh, supply chain roles. Okay. So uh, through this course, what my expectation is, I'm looking forward uh, into a career with SAP among consultant as a functional. Uh, so uh, basically. How are you, you are saying something? Something went wrong? Yeah, we, uh, his audio probably might have gone down. How are you there? So, SAP MM will be a good uh, dependable role comparing when I'm going outside. So, uh, through this, the functional part and uh, going forward, uh, getting certified as SAP MM consultant is what I'm exactly looking through the course. Okay, that's great to hear. So, as you have expected, that will be definitely taken care of. On the other hand, I will want to understand, I mean, you said that you are into SEM and uh, you have some knowledge on MM as well, right? I mean, in, the, in terms of procurement. Yeah. So, can you... So, oh, okay. mm -hmm. I work actually in a, in a warehouse now. So, I do all kind of daily, day-to-day -day transactions, uh, starting from purchase order creation, uh, to the accounting part, all the chains of transaction like uh, PR release, PO release, uh, goods coming into the warehouse, doing GR, doing binning and issuing, then delivering and shipping, and also uh, on other side the financial part flow. So at the end user level, I am fine with the user uh, flows, how the transaction is happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, okay. uh, that's what exactly what I, uh, I do about a mom in everyday life. Okay. So now uh, we'll definitely look into all those things and uh, we'll ensure that you'll get to know each and everything in detail. Okay. Also, uh, let me introduce myself as well. I'm Satish. I've uh, been working with uh, different industries, manufacturing and service-based industries as well. I have an overall about six and a half years of experience and that's into... SAP MM with some amount of domain knowledge as well, which is for about one and a half year. Okay, so I was basically with HP earlier for about five years, and then I switched into ITC annual, and then currently I'm with Accenture. Okay, okay. so this is about me. Okay, so now uh, as you were saying, uh, what to see? You are looking into a uh, consultant role and all those things, right? Absolutely fine with that. So you have some knowledge on procurement as well. So can you take me through the procurement cycle as well? See, there's mainly, I mean, I'm not, uh, don't take me in a way that I'm cross-questioning you each and everything, okay? I'm just trying to understand your uh, knowledge on what is the areas that you have knowledge on so that I will have to be starting it from where. So I can come to a conclusion on where do I need to start it over. So that's the reason, basic intention behind it. So on the configuration part, I don't have idea, any idea on what, what is exactly happening. Uh, so, if you ask me on the procurement cycle, I am not sure uh, about uh, uh, completely. I am uh, uh, clueless on uh, on what is the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's it's more like you know uh, what procurement cycle means. I mean, uh, I'll have to be focused upon one more thing as well. It's just not that I'll have to be training you on SAP MM. Okay, I'll have to be have. I will also have to focus on one more thing, which is preparing you at interview point of view as well. 
Okay, this is very very important to me, at least to me. The reason is in the future, near future, whether you get placed as a consultant or not, that's secondary to me. Okay, I'll not be concerned about it. But I giving my best and to ensure that my student or my client, or so it could be called, okay, has to get the best knowledge so that when someone is going to cross question him on something, I want him to answer it. Okay, that's my way of training. It's just not that I'll train a crush. I mean, I'll give you some information about SAP MM and I'll show you something and you make a note of each and everything and uh, you don't practice it again and it's of no use. I'll tell you this. Okay. You're understanding, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's my, that, that's, that's my way of training at least. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, it seems to. <laughs> also, let's let's see uh, how far this interest will continue further. As what was uh, all that matters, right? Yeah, definitely. That's the next ultimate thing. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, I mean, uh, it's it's not the first time that I'm being uh, training across, and I've handled about uh, 135 hard members, even at Accenture as well. I do trainings at office as well because uh, you know most of the time I. So you are uh, professionally a trader in Accenture or you are working no, with no, a team? No, 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 no. No, I'm working with a team wherein I lead a team, okay? okay. And during my uh, non-working hours, it's more like, you know, we'll be bound to a particular project and in that particular project, we'll be having certain amount of billing and the rest of the billing will be, we'll need to be showing ourselves as accountable for doing something, right? So at that particular point of time, I take care of all this training and all. Okay. Specifically, or uh, to be more clear, I take care of MM and also certain times about WM as well. I'm not very good at WM, but I do train people on WM. Okay. So that's how it's all about. So I'm just waiting for this uh, Microsoft Office OneNote to get installed across. I don't know. It's taking a little too long time. In the meanwhile, I'll just say something about procurement cycle. Why is it required and what does it mean and where and all you'll be having to make use of this thing, something of this kind, okay? So basically what happens is, what procurement means is as simple as buy, buy, it's purchase, correct, right? So yes. what do you buy? When this uh, question of purchasing or buying comes, why do you buy? To consume it. Correct, right? Who will ask you to consume it or who will ask you to buy? Is that oh, your requirement or what oh, is that? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. It could be a customer. When we talk about the customer, it's more like you know sales team. Sales team is the one who will be looking into the customer part. Correct, right? Yes. Likewise, we have something called as HR. Okay. Likewise, we have many other different teams like I mean uh, like the what is that? The manufacturing team, which is nothing but the production planning team. Okay, project system, all this team, plant maintenance team, be it a service or a material, whatever it could be. Okay, end of the day, it's gonna lead to an purchase. So what I'm trying to say is, in order to purchase something, we need to have kind of a requisition, which is nothing but a purchase requisition. Right, right. So once we have the purchase equation, what happens next? We can't directly go out and buy it across because, say, for example, I know uh, people like HP, Dell, and all these people. They do support laptops. Okay. So they have good laptops with huge configurations and at decent prices as well. Likewise, there might be something, some product where an HP or Dell might not be supporting. So I'll need to find whom the vendors, the source. Who is a person who will be able to provide me with this particular material? I'm just give me one minute. I'm so sorry about it. I'm so sorry to interrupt and uh, to pause. Okay, so uh, <coughs> sorry. So what happens is, you know, we'll go and find a source. Okay, so the source could be, am I horrible? 
No, no. Hello? Am I horrible, Sonny Harrison? Yeah, you. Sorry, I didn't get you. Horrible in the sense. Sorry? Sorry, horrible in the way I didn't get you. I mean, I, I just want to check in case if I was audible. Audible? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, you are audible. I got okay. it as horrible. Sorry. You heard audible. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. No problem. Okay. Okay. Well, so what happens is we we'll wanna we're gonna check in case who is a vendor or who is a source, wherein we'll be able to find a particular material or the service that we are in need of. Be it when it comes to manufacturing industry, what happens? There might be a machinery wherein which needs a service. Okay. So who is a person who will be able to do it? Who is a vendor? So this is nothing but sourcing, which is nothing but we are gonna send across a quotation to the person or to a vendor saying that at what price, at what lead time, and at what are the quantities or whatever it could be, which we will be able to provide me or assist me with. Say for example, what I meant is I need about hundred laptops. Okay. Will HP be able to provide me at what price and what's the lead time? Will it meet my requirement? That will be taken care at the time of searching. Okay. So next what happens is comes a matter of purchase order. So what I was saying is the main requirement is purchase requisition. It goes to sourcing which is nothing but the request for quotation and then comes the purchase order. Okay, so when, it, when we talk about the purchase order, it's nothing but a follow-on document of a purchase equation. Okay, so purchase order will be raised against a particular vendor and we will say that this is the quantity that I'm in need of and this is my lead time. This is the delivery date that you will have to be providing this particular material to me with. Okay, so with this comes a conclusion of procurement actually. Okay, but this is not at over. Procurement again can be categorized across into different different segments across. I'm sorry, is someone saying something? Oh, no, 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 it was uh, it was my way from my place, not a problem. Yeah, you can continue. Okay. It was my roommate. Okay, okay. So what happens is you know procurement can be subcategorized across into different uh, ways of procuring particularly like be it in subcontracting or in consignment or how do you want to be uh, take care of this particular procurement but in general terms it's mainly about a purchase order okay so once a purchase order is being placed across what happens is vendor will give an acknowledgement saying that he will acknowledge saying that yes I received your purchase order I'll be fulfilling your order accordingly on so and so date and we will send across and follow up mail or we call them and we ask them saying that Okay, is my order ready? He says yes. Then comes the matter of goods received. Okay, once the goods are being received across, we will receive the goods. And then what next? Who is the person who requested the goods? Some person from purchase, sorry, from uh, production planning or an HR or from project systems or whomsoever it could be. The person who has requested for it. He is the person who has to be issued it across, right? I mean, I'll have to issue, my, issue the goods across to the consent person. So that will be taken care of, okay? And comes the matter of finance. But usually what happens in a companies, like huge companies, say for example, uh, in ITC, okay? Let's talk about ITC, a small company. In this ITC, what happens is, last six invoice verification, goods received, procurement, end to end will be taken care by one consultant okay whereas a huge client like Accenture or Shell or HP Dell and all what they do is they split up their works and they split up their works in such a way that just the creation of a purchase order will be taken care by one particular team and next goods received that will be taken care by one particular team goods issuing will be by one team and invoicing will be by one particular team okay but Usually what happens is, as an MM consultant, one should be thoroughly aware about what logistic invoice verification means. Okay, The main reason behind this is, there is something called as vendor invoice management. Okay, This vendor invoice management plays a very important role when it comes to settlements. I mean, paying money to the vendor from whom we have purchased the materials. Okay. Once the payments are done, it simply means that the cycle is complete. Yes. Okay. 
So what procurement cycle in turn means, it raises, it, it starts over with a purchase equation, goes for a quotation, gets a PO created, and then follows up on the same purchase order. Next comes a matter of goods receipt, and then we will issue the same goods to the requester, and then finally we settle across the amount to the concerned vendors, and we will close the cycle. Okay, all these things will still fall in the MM bracket itself, and what happens is we will map the business according to the requirements every now and then. Okay, this what I was talking about for all this time is a simple cycle, wherein, <coughs> wherein you know, it's more like an everyday activity. Okay, this okay. is what we will be doing every day, day in and day out as an MM consultant. But as a consultant, what you will be doing is not this particular thing. Instead, the end users who will be doing all these activities will be in need of some assistance. And what assistance they will be in need of, either in terms of support or in terms of an implementation or whatever it could be. So we are the ones who will be guiding them across accordingly. It includes the enhancement and everything, right? It includes enhancements, but I don't know whether I'll have to be covering up with enhancements or not. Because, you know, uh, enhancements, I can share some enhancements, but I cannot completely give idea, I mean, I can give idea and share some enhancements as well, okay? But how Ari will be putting it across is all matters. Because, you yeah, know, I, I understand. Uh, it, it depends from, uh, varies from one client to one client. So, we yeah. can, you cannot give a fixed solution. Maybe, okay, yeah, I understand that yeah, because you know, uh, it's just not that uh, only an enhancement will help uh, Harry out. He has to understand the logic behind it. Why enhancement will come into picture? That's the one thing. Anyways, that support. I mean, uh, uh, we talk about the. I mean, we, we spoke about this thing, right? What is that procurement cycle now? Now, what MM consists of? So, I I, I think uh, I'll have to uh, switch over into something else probably. Just give me one minute. I'll open my Excel probably which will be of a better use now because it's still getting loaded across. My system is behaving a little weird today. I don't know why. Probably it gets settled across a little faster. Okay, so when it comes to uh, procurement cycle, we are clear with procurement cycle, right, Harry? Yes. Okay. Now, what MM or what MM comprises of is very, very simple, and uh, it's broadly categorized across into four or five different splits. Okay. One is master data. Okay. The next one is transaction data followed by business process okay and project today i think i'll be talking a little more rather than going with a little bit of practicals as well i hope you understand i mean the reason why i am doing this is just because in order to ensure that I'm clear about what I'm going to uh, teach you and what you will be learning as well. Okay, in case if you find any of the topics which I'll be missing and uh, which you need knowledge on, you can see that now itself or uh, by the end of the session so that whether, I mean, we'll come to a conclusion about uh, whether it will be covered or not. Okay, great. That would be good to go. Sunny, that should be fine, right? Sorry, I didn't hear you. What is that? I mean, uh, the reason why I'm, I mean, I, we'll be talking a little too much today, okay? Uh, it's not that we'll, go, we'll be going uh, into, I mean, probably we, I might not even uh, touch SAP today. I'll just clear up on what are the things that I'll be training and what's the outcome of this complete session. I mean, uh, once the MM session or training is being given across to Harry, what will be the outcome? What are the things that I'll be covering it up? And what will be the things that he'll be learning? Is what I just wanted to uh, make this thing particularly very clear about it. So uh, I just wanted to get it confirmed from you as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool. I'm, uh, I told you what my requirement is like. Uh, as long as, you know, uh, the, like Harry is comfortable. 
So you can okay. uh, take this session to like it's a warm up session and like henceforth you all can start with it. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Yeah. It's completely okay. yours okay. and Harry's understanding now. Okay. Then that's fine then. Okay. So Ari, so uh, as I already said, material ma sorry, material management is broadly categorized across into four different segments. One is master data, the next one is a transaction data, third one is a business process, and finally a project. Okay. So what master data means is simple material master. What's the next uh, second one? That's a vendor master. Then comes purchase information or PIR, purchase info record. Then comes source list and finally quota arrangement. Okay, I'll write it across as well. Material master. PAR is nothing but purchase info record. Then comes quota arrangement. Why are this called as master data? Any idea on it? Uh, basically, this is where all the data are stored. Okay, but why is it called a master data then? It's something which doesn't keep on changing every now and then, right? Yeah, that is a fixed one. Now. So, uh, how to put it across in words? No, I'm not sure why it is called as master data. That's what I mean. It's in simple words. It simply means that this records will keep. I mean, these are the records which don't change at all. Ninety percent yeah. of the time, or ninety-nine percent of the time, this master records will never change. Okay. Once a material number is created across, say for example, a material master, material number. Okay. I have created a material master with uh, some code SK1. Okay, some. I mean, I have my uh, description about it, so I just have created it across. So all the details pertaining to a material are created across in this material master. So this doesn't change most of the time. Okay, for more, for that matter, even 99% of the time. Okay, there might be certain changes which can be done, or whenever it's required, they'll be doing it across. But it doesn't change most of the time. That's the reason why it's called master data. Okay, okay. so these are the five master data that we mainly have in material management okay one is the material master again let me repeat it across uh, one is material master the second one is the vendor master the third one is purchase info record source list and quota arrangement okay you need not make a note of all these things for now because I'll be sharing a deck again with you okay so which will be containing all the details but into each and everything but when we go into practical session I would want you to write down certain things as well because uh, you will need to be practicing certain things in my absence as well. Okay. 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 okay fine. So when it okay. when it comes to transaction data, it starts over with purchase requisition. Okay. Purchase requisition. Purchase order. RFQ, which is nothing but request for quotation. This this terminology is, and uh, you might be even uh, familiar with this all those things, but it's just like you know, uh, kind of briefing session or something like that. Okay, request for quotation. Then comes goods, goods system. Then comes goods issue, and comes logistics invoice verification okay is nothing but the financial activity okay invoice verification okay so what could be a business process according to you all these things what we mean now we comprise is a business process absolutely right so that's correct there. Yeah, that's correct. So, we have all this master data, okay? We convert all this data, we make use of all this data to build up some transaction data, like these things, okay? And finally, a business process is as simple as, say for example, I have a shirt, okay? I, 
I, I belong to an uh, manufacturing industry wherein it's purely about clothing, okay? It's purely about clothing or a textile industry, okay? In my textile industry, what happens is I, I procure all the shirt pieces, I give it to certain other people or outsources, outsource this particular shirt pieces to someone else who will take care of buttoning, who will take care of ironing, who will take care of stitching as well, okay? Let's assume in this way. So what happens? Where is the material? with me in my plan but I'll have to send it across to some other people okay to get the things done and finally I'll receive an end product as a shirt I give a shirt piece buttons are procured across by different means and ironing is done by sh uh, different means and the packing is done by different means and finally our end product called as shirt okay it comes to me okay so how will I map this across into my business process so those things will be mapped across and we have about seven to eight different business processes. We have about seven to eight different business processes, okay? And these business processes will be the final outcome of MM. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll just mute for two, three minutes because my background is a little noisy. You can yeah, continue, definitely. not a problem. Right. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so in this particular business process, it simply means that there are something called as subcontracting processes subcontracting wherein I give some material to outside and get the material inside in a different form okay likewise there is something else also called as consignment process okay what consignment means is I have a warehouse I have some space which is of extra use to me okay and I need a material which I will not make use of on a frequent basis, okay? But without that particular material, my business is going to halt. It will be completely shut down in case if I don't have that particular material. So what I need to do is, I need to have this material at all times. Whether I use it or not, it's none of my business. But it's a headache of a vendor all the time, okay? So what vendor does is, he will come to my warehouse, okay? He'll come to my warehouse and in my warehouse, I'll give some space to my vendor saying that you can dump all your materials over here. Whenever I am in need of a material, I'll make use of this particular material. And whichever the material or the quantity that I'm using for or which I have consumed, I'll pay only for it, okay? So this kind of a business process is called as consignment process, okay? Likewise, there is something called as STO, which is nothing but stock transfer order. Okay. I think you should be aware about this particular process yeah. because it's, it's, you know, it's an use saving to any organization. Okay. Okay. The reason behind this is as simple as when stock transport order happens, when uh, I procure a material within India, I might be charged about 100 rupees. Okay, when I procure a material from US, I might be charged about 100 rupees, but the discounts or the tax that I'll be getting or the benefits that I'll be getting are a little more. So, instead of I procuring a material within inside of India, I'll go and get the material from US itself. Just because to save, save some money in terms of taxing and all the things, you know, I can save huge amount of money. That's the reason why this, I mean, nowadays, SEO is uh, turning into this kind of a business process. Okay. okay, what STO simply means is there are two kinds of STOs. One is inter-company STO, other one is intra-company STO. What intra-company means is I have a company called HP. Okay, I have one plant in Electronic City. I have other plant in Whitefield. Okay, so what happens is if I are other example or what can I give us? I have another plant in Chennai. Let's assume that we have other plant in Chennai, okay? So what happens is, in case if I need to procure a material, okay, in STO, what happens is, it simply means that it's a procurement end of the day, okay? If I need to procure a material from a vendor, I might be charged about 100 rupees, okay? I might be charged about 100 rupees. So what happens is, I'll not go with this. I'll check in case if my Chennai plant 
has some material okay if i procure a same 100 rupee material from chennai okay it includes the delivery logistic costs and everything but end of the day when it reaches bangalore it might even come under 80 rupees okay it might even be about 80 rupees too the reason is the the, the taxation no and uh, the discounts that i'll be i'll be getting when it's getting transferred across is a little too huge i can show this as a to the government saying we saved a grant so i'll go with sto okay sto is nothing but stock transport order intra means plant to plant plant to plant to plant within the same company code within the same company code this is intra likewise we can transfer the materials from company code to company code so what this means is company code to company code means is i have a company hp in india i have a company hp even in us as well right right so what happens is i can get the material from us to india too even that is a kind of sto process i'll teach you each and everything in depth about it with the back end settings which you need not be too much uh, worried about okay one minute control e this is intercompany sto intercompany okay okay sub contracting process consignment process sto process likewise we have something called as account determination what happens in account determination is and one more thing just give me one minute okay <clears throat> what happens in account determination and what happens in pricing pressure is pricing pressure is as simple as how will the price be picked up on in this particular purchase order okay okay how will the pricing be coming and uh, what are the details were in uh, uh, why is this kind of a pricing coming into picture that thing will be coming from pricing procedure okay yeah. but what account determination means is not pricing procedure however when the goods are being received across what kind of documents are getting posted across which okay. gl account i mean say for example hr team requested for a laptop okay so when i am paying the amount to the vendor who has to actually pay is the hr team right yeah logically speaking so it's the hr team yeah they will be having so, a, a separate gl absolutely so this gl accounts will be there and to which gl account the business has to be mapped across and who will be getting the money and all those things will be determined across at account determination level okay 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 so these are the main business processes on which the there are many other things also like you know pipeline and uh, rtp and all this which will be covered across in inventory management which you need not be too much uh, worried about again i am saying all these things will be again covered across each and everything in depth with the back end settings sorry with the back end settings what is the arm button okay with the back end settings when i talk about the inventory management and the procurement processes okay likewise what does project mean to you project uh mm -hmm. example you are assigned a particular task okay you are assigned with a particular task and you are doing that particular task so what kind of a task it is in your current organization you take care of procurement right end user role okay. correct right so you are in need of some assistance what will that be called as support correct right yeah. support project so what support project means is so i'll be giving you or i'll be sharing across a few tickets which i have worked upon okay in my previous past which logically speaking i am not supposed to share but i'll be sharing it across with different different uh, uh, scenarios okay i'll be sharing across this thing as well okay in the support project 
and uh, I'll be asking you to work on all those tickets and giving me answers as well and you'll have to be providing the answers. You can make use of Google but that's not the first thing that I'll have to be, uh, that you'll have to be doing it across. First thing you'll have to be doing it across is try on your own. If you don't find the answer, Google it across. If you still don't find the answer, you can come back to me. I'll provide you with the answer. Okay? Perfect. This support project will comprise of the tickets that I'll be sharing it across. And uh, in, when you go to an interview, this will be a definite question wherein you will be asked to talk about your support project or experience or the tickets that you worked upon on a support project. How and what are the roles and responsibilities when it comes to support project? Okay? okay. So that thing also will be covered upon. Likewise, what a rollout means. Rollout. It simply means that, well, wait. I'll have to talk about it a little later. Next comes implementation project. Okay? What is an implementation project? And what are the methodologies that are used in the market? And how will this be taken care of? Okay? All these things will be dealt in implementation time. Okay? Even this particular implementation, how will you implement it across? What an blueprint means? What an as is analysis? analysis mean okay what does a project realization mean project preparation how will you go live live what will be your role at that particular point of time all these details will be covered in implementation okay implementation project say for example in my current project i'm working on an implementation project wherein okay let me not reveal about the, i mean talk about the client i'm on an implementation project so what happens is I have to follow certain procedures. I'll have to be leading a team who will be configuring what. All these things will be under implementation. Okay? So I work for X, but who is my client? Y. What is his requirement? Will be achieved in implementation. Getting right? Yeah, I got it. Getting it, getting it. Okay. So what is rollout then? What do you think yeah, about so it? So well, any basic uh, idea or general idea about it? Yeah, when a structure is formed out, uh, we get the requirements from the client and we will form a structure. Uh, maybe getting confirmation from the clients will be the rollout uh, section. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, what happens is, say for example, what's the name of your organization that you said? T and E, right? T E. T E. Yeah. Okay. TE Electronic uh, Electrics is based out in where is it uh, based out? US. US, is that US. the only location that you have? No, it is there in uh, around 120 countries. Okay, so what's the other country that you have? Just one other country? Uh, uh, India. Uh, India. Well, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. What happens is SAP is implemented across in US. Okay. TE as SAP MM implemented across in US. Correct. So now what happens is we don't have it in India. Okay. How will you get this thing rolled across to India? Okay. So implemented in US, we will be getting it rolled over into Indian plant. Okay. This is nothing but rollout project. I will be talking about even the rollout project as well. Okay. Along with this, there is something called as testing. All these projects will undergo testing. Okay. I mean, be it a support project, you are working on a support project or an implementation project or a rollout project. All these three projects will definitely involve testing. What are the tools used in it? What is in support project? In the support project, what is that? Uh, I mean, uh, ticketing tool that you are using, making use of. Okay. What's the methodology used in implementation? And in the rollout project likewise. So what is the testing tool that you are making use of? All those things I'll be giving idea about it and mainly when it comes to support and implementation and rollout I'll be uh, uh, showing you a few things as well. I mean I'll be sharing across the tickets that's for sure. Likewise I'll be sharing across the details of WhatsApp methodology whatever uh, in each and every phase what will be happening and all those things. Likewise in rollout project what will be happening everything will be there and likewise in testing not everything can be shown across in testing. Let me uh, make this thing very clear. Testing projects simply mean 
what happens is say for example I am implementing SAP to client TE okay let's assume that we are implementing SAP to TE okay so who will be testing it across I might be testing it across or a different company itself might be testing it across getting it right yeah, and it's not. I mean, if you don't understand, you can yeah, stop me anytime. Any okay. okay. Say, for no, example, no, no, no. Okay. company X is implementing SAP into TE, but company Y might be testing it across. Why is this in this way? Why company X will implement and why company Y will test it across? What could be the reason? Uh, whether uh, we are uh, sticking to the same process, what company? Uh, okay, a little closer. I mean, you, you're right. You're you're absolutely correct. But because why? if a company A, uh, if com if we don't implement it in a good way, company A will all uh, also have an effect on that. No, not because of that. See, simple. Company. T is having SAP implemented across. I mean, getting implemented, and it's being implemented by X. How will TE as a company will get to know that everything is doing, going on in the right way? Correct, right. How will I trust him? Okay. Correct, right. He might be wrong as well. Who will be telling yeah, that he is going wrong? I'll not be knowing. For me, SAP is getting implemented across for the first time, so I don't know what exactly X is doing. Correct, right. So. Yeah. Whatever the how that's going to happen, that's in a later on stage. But what happens exactly here is this company Y will be paid some amount to find and identify whether all these things are being correct and all the process are being implemented across in the right way. Likewise, is the testing or are there any bugs in the solution that is being provided by Hex? Okay, all these things will be done by Y company Y. Okay, so that's a reason why usually the testing projects go to different companies, and that will not be done by the same organization where the implementation will be happening. Okay, okay? this is the basic things. These are the main things or the basic things. In order, in case if you are good enough with all those things, you know you can find a job anywhere. But let me make one more thing clear and ask you a few more questions as well. What's your availability in the first place? It will be in the evening. Evenings, that's fine. At what time? Uh, seven thirty to eight thirty. Uh, today it was uh, very exceptional. Uh, after uh, seven thirty, whatever it is, it may be okay, fine with our uh, nine to ten. It's also fine for me. Uh, or after after the ten to eleven is also up to eleven. Uh, seven thirty to eleven any time is fine. Okay. So, uh, in case if I connect between. Nine and eleven should that be fine? Yeah, that will be fine. Not a problem. That's fine, right? I mean, yeah, you'll that's... not be sleeping. I mean, because I don't see you, I can't see you, so you'll not be sleeping, right? <laughs> no, no, no. You can uh, always ask me, okay, so that I'll respond to you. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's great. The reason why I'm asking you is for the uh, how about Saturday and Sunday? Saturday and Sunday, I'm available. Not a problem. The reason why I'm asking is we can cover it up. No, the reason why I'm asking is very clear. We can cover it all the five topics by end of Sunday, including the backend settings. Okay, I'll cover up all the five topics by Sunday, and we can meet up for a couple of hours until Sunday. Okay, be it uh, on Saturday and Sunday, probably uh, any daytime also is fine with me. But uh, uh, tomorrow and day after. Okay, uh, the reason why I'm saying this again is uh, I foresee something which is coming up into my uh, bucket, wherein I'll have to uh, be talking to a couple of people uh, in Canada. Okay, so that's the reason why I'm uh, saying. So I can connect between nine and eleven. I got no issues with that completely. And in case if you are free or uh, available between five thirty and seven thirty, even I'm okay with that. Okay. Or any daytime also is okay for the next two days. Uh, Saturday and Sunday I will be completely available, but possible for for me to do before because don't worry about it. Not at all a problem. So we will connect between tomorrow, day after tomorrow, and Saturday and Sunday. You let me know a time now. 
Okay. You specify a time. I'll come to that. You give me a time so that we'll uh, fix it up now itself. What are the topics that we are going to cover and what I expect from you, I'll tell you each and everything. So you let me know a time on Saturday and Sunday. But uh, if we go in that faster pace, can I able to uh, follow Actually, you? I'll tell you. Don't, don't, don't want to worry about it at all. I'll make you learn about it. Okay? okay. I'll make you learn. I'll not let you just... I'm fine. I'll yeah, just yeah. Cover all the things and all the things, nothing like that. Don't worry about it, okay? What I'm going to do now is, okay? 9 to auto master data will be covered up. Okay? This three topics can be covered up on just something. There are only a settings involved. Topics. Okay. Yeah. off. But and what is the practice that you did for the last five years of training? Okay. Or what you need and all these things will be covered up in this thing. Okay. Okay. Asking again. I'm asking you the same question. Yeah. I am pretty comfortable with this. I'd then that's great. So we'll meet up tomorrow. I'll wind up the session for today. Okay, I'll send this sheet in the same way. I'll take a screenshot of it or I'll attach this section. Anyhow, I'm. It won't be a problem. Oh, then that's great. Then that's. These are the main topics. You can uh, consult a few of. And in case if you feel like you need some other information apart from this topic. Let me know. Yeah. That should be that's an uh, you know. I'm absolutely. Oh, yeah. if that is the case. I have some uh, project life cycle that has happening inside our company, as you told. Like from US, there is a global team. From mm -hmm. there, the wherever across the world, wherever they need a project which has to be some enhancement has to be done or some support or some improvement on their project has to be happened. They uh, they will circulate a PLD, uh, which is product life cycle. Uh, this thing uh, uh, with the complete business requirement and the complete files. So for my plant, I am the approval. So I used to get a lot of PLDs uh, across the globe. So mm -hmm. I, if we want, I'll just share one of the thing. So uh, about that, how to look into that? That will be a great thing. If uh, if I I'll be keen to know all this. So will you be taking care of announcements also now? Currently, uh, no, no, I'm because not I, I'll, 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 I'll tell you. Oh, okay, one more important uh, thing. The thing, I'm is, just, uh, the thing is, I'll just explain about the role. The role, what I am doing is logistics execution. So basically, three plants uh, in India comes under me, uh, under uh, this thing. So what are the change requirements if you want to happen in this three plant on the prospect of SAP? So I have mm -hmm. to roll down the request and that's where the PLD, the project life cycle, uh, that format will come into play. So like that yes, throughout sir. the world, there are a lot of uh, plans which is uh, have happening. So there will be a lot of PLDs which shared across mails. So that is what I was uh, uh, talking about. FDD also will come in this, right? This. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, so that that is ultimate thing. So there will be a project request. So what exactly uh, the requirement is, whether this is a FDP project or BRD, uh, exactly what you are writing, that will be the case I am talking about. Yes. This is uh, your I, I requirement also. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, I got no issues with that. But again, let me make thing, one thing very, very clear, okay? Enhancements, whatever the enhancements that you do, you can talk about the enhancement and you cannot re re repeat that enhancement in some other company okay this is very very yeah, important yeah. okay yeah. i think you understand about this thing this will be more yeah. like you know compliance no uh, yeah i understand but maybe some but, kind of reports but, if, I'll, I'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell you reports also are compliance but again what you can do is you can share your knowledge okay but you can't develop the same kind of report until and unless it's being signed off across 
thoroughly and read across thoroughly by your client. Okay, that's always there. Say for example, if I develop a report now today for my uh, project, I can't share the same kind of a report, but I can share it across. But that's there. Okay, I'll I, I'll definitely share it across. I'll put across it in a different way and I'll share it across. That's definitely there and it has to be done also. But not all the things can be incorporated in the same report. I think you are understanding, right? There is yeah, certain yeah. fine tweaking here and there should be done. Okay, okay. That's it. That's the only thing. Okay, but one more thing. If I talk about the enhancements right away, you will definitely not understand anything. Yeah, you will not that, understand that is definitely. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I completely I will agree talk about you, yeah. this, the enhancements definitely when I or come the, to. Maybe at the later stage. Yes, when I come to this project, okay. When I come to this project, be it in a support project, how an enhancement will be taken care of, or be it in an implementation project, how an enhancement will be taken care of. I'll be talking about all these things. Okay, what's your understanding about BRD? Sorry? What does BRD mean? Uh, BRD. That is a standard <coughs> project. Uh, I forgot actually the full form. Uh, BRD. Business. Requirement. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Document. document. BRD, yeah. Okay. Yeah. BRD means business requirement document. Likewise, is AD. People call it with different names based on the organizations. Okay. Yeah. What is this? Is an analysis document. BRD and AD are no different. Okay. These two are still one and the same. Okay. Business requirement document contains. This is my requirement. Okay. An analysis document also contains the same thing, but in analysis document, what happens is we will also give an estimation and we what we foresee out of this BRD. Okay. You understanding, right? Say for example, my client is asking for one report, okay, and he says this is my requirement and this is the reason why I need it. Okay, in the analysis document, what happens is I'll put in my strategy or my way on how I derive this report say for example this involves certain tables okay let us assume that this involves certain table EKKO, EKPO and all these tables how will I combine it across what's the estimate or what's the hours that I will be uh, making use of or how many hours of involvement is required from my end how many hours of requirement is required from my technical team, which is nothing but the ABAP team? Okay, getting right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those, those, things, those things will be captured across in analysis document. How many hours will be involved in creating or in deriving an functional specification? Okay. What D D D means is detailed. Design document. Nowadays, oh, what happened? Detailed design document. Nowadays, what is happening is that things are changing so drastically. We will not be writing any FS. Okay, and that will be included in the detailed design document itself. Okay, detailed design document simply means I have a business process. Okay, this business process will be documented across in this particular thing. Okay, in this DD document and Along with this, if I need to change something or why is this business being processed across, I mean this scenario is being processed across, why will this be coming into picture and what are the steps that I'll have to be taking across in case if this comes, everything will be detailed, I mean uh, each and everything will be captured across in this particular document, okay, yeah. these days. And in case if, if they foresee any enhancement, even that will be in, captured across over here as a change request. Okay. Okay. Change request or via change management. Okay. All these things will be uh, very very important. Okay. But when it comes to enhancements, I'll not be talking in depth about each and every enhancement. I'll show you how to derive the results, and I'll talk about a few enhancements that I've uh, handled across in a. In my past, I mean, if I like to talk about enhancements, I can give you about hundreds of thousands. Okay, there are so many. Okay, but which I have worked upon and which I feel like which can be shared across and which will be important to you as well in the near future. How you will be putting it across in your interviews 
I'll I'll give you a few of them. Okay, at, at the max, I can share you about 10 enhancements. Okay, when it comes, I'll be sharing about 10 to uh, sorry 20 to 30 support tickets, around 10 uh, enhancements. Okay, and uh, all these things will be shared across. So, and when I talk, when I was talking about the project, I missed out about the stables. Okay, uh, this is one important thing. Okay, why it is important is whether you create a material master or I mean a master data or a transaction data or whatever it could be. Okay, it simply means that there is some data in SAP. We need not search for details. Okay, everything is captured across in one or the other place. Where is it captured across? End of the day, it's captured in tables. Okay, anything and everything you can't escape from it. Okay, it's more like that. Whatever the details, even if you put across a dot, okay, even if you put across a dot in one of the uh, transaction data, be it a purchase equation or a purchase order, it can be captured across, or it is already captured across in a table. Where it is captured across, in which table, we will be learning it across. Because without the knowledge on the tables, you will not be able to achieve anything when it comes to enhancement. Tables are the main source through which the logics will be derived across for enhancements. Okay, so we will conclude this session today for now, okay, with okay. this thing and uh, hope I am clear about what I will be uh, training you on and how it will be taken forward. Yeah, great. Uh, that is a clear picture on it and uh, this is what I want to So. Yeah, fine with this. In case if you, I mean you can talk to your colleagues as well and you can check with them as well. In case if I have missed out on any and in which you will be in need of. See, this mainly what I'm trying to understand and uh, I mean what I'm trying to uh, train you is, you know, whatever the project it is, okay? If you know the basic knowledge of all these things, if you know the knowledge of all these things, okay, you can handle any of this. You understanding, right? If you know yeah, this yeah. thoroughly, I'll train you thoroughly. Don't worry about it. I'll give you in-depth knowledge on all these things. But how you are gonna learn it is only via practice. Okay? What SAP means? Let me ask you a question. What SAP, What does SAP stand for? Uh, SAP has many meanings. Okay, you need not be too much concerned about it. Okay, okay. only thing that you will have to be doing and what SAP stands to you for now, okay, is Sit. sit. Uh, no, okay. sit and practice. Okay, this is what SAP means to you. Okay, once you are very good at it, once you have mastered it across with sitting and practicing, the next thing is salary salary appraisal programmers oh my god I put it across somewhere else okay it turns out into salary appraisal program okay you can mint money I'm telling you very clearly okay you can mint money out of it but the only thing is you will have to sit and practice 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 thoroughly okay how I entered into this industry let me make this thing very clear HP was very good company Okay, they gave me an option to learn SAP. Okay, how I learned SAP outside. Okay, how they gave me an opportunity to learn inside of SAP, uh, HPS. I copied this SAP into my SAP, I mean HP system, and I used to practice at least for about a couple of hours a day. Okay, two hours a day was more than sufficient for me for about six months. Okay, six months thorough practice, two hours a day. Excluding Saturday and Sunday, okay. Excluding and Saturday and Sunday, two hours a day of practice is very very important. The, what I'm saying is, my classes were on only weekends. Okay. You're getting right. My class, yeah. the when I learned SAP, in that was in the year 2010, okay. 2009, 2010, it was. <coughs> so it was more like you know. Uh, it was on a weekend, so it took me about uh, four months to complete the course. 
and every day two hours of practice it gave me a good job okay without any hesitation hp itself uh, gave me a good job and they told me that where did you learn and they asked me about many other things as well and the way i uh, faced the interview they were a little shocked because they gave me a good decent package as well by comparing me with an uh, senior consultant okay that is how i had practice data cross okay that is how i want you to practice at least if not two hours a day oh one more thing you will be coming for a daily class right yeah I'll be coming. the class for you will be daily so it simply means that in 45 hours at the max about 55 to 60 hours you will be done with mm which is about one and a half month that's it okay in one and a half month practicing hmm? will be important after that uh, what you said like uh, practicing the same things will be very important I guess. no not just that if I do something today on material master on how to create material master and the backend settings what I want you to do is I want you to spend at least one hour a day will that be possible to you again Mm, yeah, I can do that in the early morning. Yeah, I can do that. You will have to do it. Without which, you'll know. You will not be able to. Uh... Okay, well, one more question. Okay, I mean, it, it might be uh, sounding a little funny as well, and also it's a uh, uh, your. Okay, when are you planning to uh, get into an SAP MM consultant role? As soon as I learn. I mean. As soon as means exactly in 60 days or 90 days, 120 days, is it? In about four to six months at least. Yes, at least. Uh, in the next four to six months. Yes. Yes, right. So which means if I teach you something today, you will have to practice it the very next. In case why why I'm saying the very next day is, I'll go to this topic. You might. If you don't practice, you will forget it. You understanding, right? Yeah. That's very so, uh, important. One hour, yeah. one hour practice will be uh, enough. Right? So if that is the case, I can uh, uh, anyway. I'll be going office late, uh, like 10 o'clock in the morning. So I can wake up early in the morning and I can uh, allocate one hour for that. That won't be a problem. Yes, one hour practice is more than sufficient. I did. Okay. And weekends I can practice more time if I want. And, and then yes, you will have to do it. You will have to do it on the weekends as well. There is no other option. Okay. In case you get into a SAP MM market as a consultant, then you will definitely need to be on your toes and this a lot, at least one hour a day for the next one and a half month. And after one and a half month, Every Saturday and Sunday, be it you have an appointment with your girlfriend, if you are married, you have a shopping plan, or whatever it could be, you'll have to hold it at least for some time. Okay? You understanding, right? I'm I might be talking yeah. a little too personal of yours. I'm so sorry about it, but that is how it's to be. You love doing it, no matter what. Okay? Uh, you're making out to making it with your experience, right? So I'll be glad to follow that. Okay, that will be great. So we'll watch the session for today. Okay. We will start over with tomorrow at nine o'clock with material master. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, Shalom. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. Sunny, you there? Yeah, yeah I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So, what time so shall we uh, continue with the same? Sorry. What time are we meeting tomorrow? Tomorrow uh, we are planning to meet at nine o'clock. Should that be fine with you as well? No issues. I mean, uh, st starting tomorrow, will I be? I mean, will it be like me and Ari alone, or me, you, and Ari? Uh, How is it? I'll have to organize the meeting, so I'll have to be there. But I'll I'll be uh, on mute and I'll be doing my other work. Okay, that'll be fine then. So, uh, so, so tomorrow, me and Harry are planning to meet between nine and eleven for the next couple of days, and Saturday and Sunday also will be meeting. 
Okay. What we are trying to uh, do is we'll be co covering up this particular topics, all these five topics, okay. with some kind of questionnaire. Okay. Right. And uh, I'll be. It'll be more like you know you will be practicing in the back end for about one hour's time, which will still be sufficient. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not that uh, it's too much. It'll be fine in case if he does one hour since your practice without. I mean by turning his phone off and TV off and everything muted across with only SAP, SAP, SAP. Okay, so one hour is more than sufficient for him. So this five topics will be covered across because uh, these are the only two topics which are a little vast, which will be taking about four hours, and this will be just one hour. Okay, All so right. including Saturday one hour, and the next one hour I'll be letting him free for that day, but on Sunday I'll again meet him up just to check what he has learned. Okay. All right. And in case if he needs any further inputs or assistance. Because it's once he starts practicing, he'll definitely get some questions. Okay? okay, I want him to come up with questions. I will train him in such a way that he has to come up to me with questions. Okay, okay. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to train him completely or something like that. Okay, I'll be giving him enough information, but I'll also put him, put it across in a way that yeah, while practicing, he'll be coming up with more questions, which I wanted exactly. Okay. Without that, you will not be learning. Let me make this thing clear. Okay. In case if you practice whatever I say, and if he come, if he uh, comes back to me after one and a half month and says, I did all these things, and uh, is this only this thing? No. I don't want that to be in that way. Okay. He has to finally get a job. That's my intention. That's how I train people. That's my way of training at least. Again, let me make this thing clear. Well, I think you've been uh, pretty loud and clear. And uh, Harry, as I know him, uh, he's a person who would definitely <coughs> come up with. Uh, more than what you expect questions <laughs> so uh, what is yes I'll, I'll be sharing both of you uh, you know I'll be sharing each other's number to uh, both of y'all so that uh, okay. you know, if there is any timing change or anything y'all can or I'll form a group on whatsapp best so we can uh, you know yeah, no uh, problem with communicate that. directly yeah, yeah that'll be great yeah all right then uh, and any questions pertaining to issue any but any questions pertaining to SAP or the questionnaires that he has, he can post it over there also. Okay, but definitely no good mornings and good afternoons and good evenings. Okay, I'm so sorry about it. <laughs> okay, anything and everything, whatever the question it could be on re related to SAP MM or any other module also. In case if I know, I can definitely help you with this. But SAP MM definitely yes, I'll give answer to it. But I, I'm very bad at WhatsApp. I'll be looking at every two hours once or something like that. Okay, I'll be uh, keeping my phone aside and I'll be handling many other things. So during my office hours and apart from my office hours, I'll be definitely be online. I'll be uh, reporting to you very immediately probably. What is your okay. working hour? My working hours, it completely depends. Okay, <laughs> You know, I start at 8 o'clock and end at 5 o'clock at office. I start my shuttle. My shuttle starts at 5.30 and I reach home at 7 o'clock. And what I foresee is there is certain changes that are going to happen in my implementation. Okay, those things have to be held upon or dragged upon over a call because my clients are based out in Canada. Okay, so Canada, I'll have to, I mean, it's more like you know, it's about uh, 9 8 now, which it's is now early 9 time. Yeah, 9.38 their time. So, we have, I mean, uh, they are trying to organize a uh, call between 7:30 and 8:30. Okay, that's a, that's what their plans are because so that uh, we'll also not be a little late, too late for me and too early for them. It shouldn't be the case. So that's the reason why they are trying to moderate it across and they are scheduling it across between 8 and 9 day time. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So that's, that's the reason. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine then. Uh, thanks, Ari. So, Sunny, uh, do we need to continue with the same call for the other guy? Um, I he has uh, he postponed it actually. Uh, he just dropped me on. Okay. He's still in his office. He got a client call, so uh, mm -hmm. we'll be meeting on Saturday. Okay, no problem. Yeah. But uh, let me know the timing and everything so that I'll be prepared for it. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll update you in advance. All right, no problem. Okay then, uh, thanks Sunny. So we'll be winding it up today. So tomorrow we'll be meeting at 9 and 11, between 9 and 11 p.m. All right, all right, great. Thanks, thank yeah, you yeah. everybody. Yeah, thanks, thank good you. night all. Bye-bye.